Welcome back to The Bloom as we continue our journey exploring the emerging culture of transformational festivals. In this episode, we look at the themes of co-creation, participation, and modeling, and how applying these principles is fostering opportunities for us to practice the world we would wish to live in. And not just to practice it, but to then live the shared experience of that very world for days at a time. We begin this episode by looking at co-creation, how transformational festivals are produced through a collaborative model which combines the contributions and efforts of a significant portion of participants at the festival. My people in the front, hey, yo, you out there? Come on, let me hear you get a little loud. My people in the back, hey, yo, you out there? Come on, let me hear you get a little loud. My people on the left, hey, yo, you out there? Come on, let me hear you get a little loud. My people on the right, hey, yo, you out there? Come on, let me hear you get a little loud. Undeniably, one of the most influential transformational events in the world today is Burning Man in the Black Rock Desert of Nevada. Many of its core values have informed the ethos of transformational festival culture. Key among these are principles of co-creation and participation in an event where there are to be no spectators and everyone is expected to bring their gifts to the party. Over the course of a week, 60,000 people converge in the middle of the harsh desert fire to create a bustling, electrified city composed of hundreds of theme camps, a swarming hive of art cars, and monumental art installations which serve as landmarks amidst explosions of light and sound. Not to mention Fairmount Fire. All of this formed around the central effigy of a giant man and a temporary temple that serve as focal points for this authentic, modern-day communal ritual. We put together a big, big camp, 240 people, 50-foot domes, several 20, 30-foot domes, five, six teepees, dining hall, our 5,000-square-foot IntelliKey, which we do workshops and transformational presentations in. This is what we manifest. We came out here for otherworldly motives. We were Bohemians, and we have Bohemian values, and, and we were looking for a big blank space where we could, you know, realize our vision unmolested by society, only to discover that we had actually created a city and now we were responsible for thousands of people, and we were the establishment. <laughs> Which we're building. Look at this beautiful work we're doing. This is our God empathy box. Is that what this is called? This is going to be the empathy ice cream cone. The empathy ice cream cone. <laughs> we miss the sun going down, but it's just sort of a magical time on the playa and time on build. Really, it's just a beautiful day in the neighborhood. From the playa. We go to the San Francisco Bay Area, where in an enormous artist-run warehouse, many of the art projects destined for Burning Man and beyond are being planned and constructed. I came to work here because I got a, a commission for a 30-foot tall sculpture, so I needed a building that was a little bit taller than that. Uh, it was back in 2005 when this six-acre building was empty. Today it's bustling with 164 people doing all manner of art, innovation, and industrial building. Uh, so we get everything from fine artists to industrial artists such as myself. 
it's kind of a, a really amazing blend because we all support each other in those areas of expertise that we may not ourselves have. As I was um, at my doctor's office, sitting on her desk was the December issue of the Smithsonian Magazine. On the cover of that was this 3D rendering of a brain. And I started staring at it thinking, wow, that would look really cool if it was ginormous and made out of steel. That's an actual brain scan. And so we want to build something inside that kind of mimics that. Controlled by a Neurosky EEG headset. We'll have a participant sitting in front of the head, looking at the head, and whatever's going on in their head is triggering what's going on inside the sculpture. It's fun because it requires problem solving throughout the whole process. We think we, you know, we have an idea and then you get the grant and you really have to figure out, okay, how are we really gonna build it? One of the tenets of our, of our shop and of our space has always been a teaching group because it takes a, a, good, a good, strong collaborative effort from everybody. And then they have input about, oh, we could do it, you know, this particular part that you want, we want to do this way, here's a way to do that. Yes, you're working 10 hours a day uh, trying to get the piece done so you can load it on the trailer, but at the end of it all, you want to finish it, you know, and you want to do it well. We'll be in the playa between the man and the esplanade. You shouldn't be able to miss it because there's not going to be very many giant, enormous, lit up brains out there at night. So, Zach, I'm singing this one just for you. My little thing is called the front porch. And it's a front porch at night at Burning Man. I felt like I was just another dark shadow. And I wanted to make these contacts that I would be five feet away and I couldn't see them. I couldn't look in their eyes. God, I wish I had the ability to make more tea and maybe some food and maybe somewhere to put my coat when I wanted to dance and, and a pool of light so I could see people. And I wanted to get me and my friends up on something so we wouldn't get run over. And I was getting lazy. I rode my bike around there for 10 plus years. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized I just wanted to bring my camp with me on, out onto the playa. And I was like, immediately like farmhouse, front porch, Americana, yeah, that's it. And the thing got out of control in the kitchen and I love cookies, I got a sweet tooth and they got a bar and they got a... Oh, good gracious. So right after Burning Man, I went out and spent my rent money on a tractor that didn't even run. Got it breathing fire in a couple months and bought an old boat trailer off the Craigslist. The guy had a boat on it and I was like, no, no, no I just want the trailer. Tore apart three barns, borrowed license plate, like every 30 minutes another tire would blow. And the cops were just like looking at this thing and we were like, yeah, man, what the hell? And still you have that borrowed license plate. I forgot to give it back. How about it? And then it's made out of kindling. You get it out the Burning Man and every jerk that drives by with a flamethrower on his truck, you're worried he's gonna burn your damn pile of kindling down for crying out loud. Oh, good gracious. Oh, getting stressed out just thinking about it. Fortunately, not all art projects are as stressful to manage. In fact, some are made specifically to facilitate a state of tranquility and meditation. recycled materials from the city and the idea of picking up trash as art and then combining that with natural materials from Mother Nature and the unity of, of bringing the sacred and the profane together. It was a collaborative with uh, me and Cody and maybe five other people, creative people that um, all came down together. Scotty is always such an open-hearted man. He just lets everyone, yo, come in, help, you know, contribute and people will see us making stuff and then go away and then come back. Oh, I brought you guys all these flowers. You can use them, you know. Um, I was in the streets of Manhattan, like bringing the softness and the, the sacred soft space under the hard streets of Manhattan and to take this consciousness to where there is pain and struggle right to the heart of that. And especially in, uh, in America, it's, it's a disposable society that we live in and we waste so much and actually to see it as something beautiful and as um, as art and um, you start to see things in a different way you know it's all around us it's just about seeing seeing it recognizing it and sharing that consciousness one clear evolution of transformational festivals is that the music stages have become more and more like art installations unto themselves my name is William Podvin um, people call me Dollar Bill I've built this stage the Luna stage here at Envision Festival 
Collecting all the driftwood was a, was, a, was a lot of work. Seven people was a core team in the beginning. We come in at 6 and 6.30 in the morning, have breakfast, start working, and then finish around noon, for, eat lunch, and then take a four hour break, and then come back at four, and then work into the night. For 13 days, maybe. We're a base bus, and we're from Calgary, and we built this stage. We literally came into this with, uh, with dimensions drawn up that we'd gone over with uh, a builder, a contractor, and, uh, and an idea in our head. It wasn't like there was zero you know, pages and pages of schematics and floor layouts and lighting design. It was all really kind of done on the spot. And we had some angels come through and help build this, you know, which is the thing I love about the festival is when you're building something and you have a, a vision of what you want to create and you, maybe you're going to be behind a little bit, there's always people that come and take a massive role and they do it because of their, their, how much they love the project and how excited they are to be at the festival. We spent um, like eight and a half hours on the last day doing the dream weaving in between some of the triangles up in the scattered beams at the top. But we all wear many hats. I mean, yeah. we're, all, we're all builders, we're all cookers, yeah. we're all cleaners. You know, we all just like, when we see a job that needs to get done, there's no uh, asking or wondering, it's just somebody jumps in and they take over and then in the end everybody's worked together so hard to make everything come yeah. together. I think the people come here to learn, you know, they definitely come to learn and these are, it's like if you go to church and then you're sitting here and you're watching the minister, right? We're all coming to listen to the transmissions of the different people, right? Like whether it's music or the speakers, and trying to see something and learn something and find something you know, and connect. So I think that it should be something beautiful. And then, of course, all these co-creative pieces find their place within the greater picture of the festival itself. We decided that we wanted to get into the festival world ourselves and provide people the same kind of experience that inspired us so much. I just took a really big leap of faith and decided to leave my day job and just trust that if this is what I'm supposed to be doing, gonna work out for me. And this year, I'm working at Lightning in a Bottle. I'm leaving in eight days to go to Boom. Just on the production side of things, uh, it starts out about 10 to 12 people uh, early on in the year, maybe six to eight months out, and then it gradually builds up to 30 or 40 people managing different departments. But when we get on site, we're pulled together all these artists and all these different parts of the community from all over the, the country. 700, 800 people that are all coming here and bringing their piece of the puzzle, you know, their piece of the pie to build this experience. Boom, 2010. It was nine days long. I had 900 artists to take care of and 30 staff. It's a 24-hour festival, 24-hour programming. Usually, my first shift tends to be about 36 to 40 hours. It's the most challenging thing I've ever done. You know, it challenges me mentally, physically, emotionally. It takes everything that I am to do this job. I get a satisfaction out of this work that I haven't found anywhere else. In the real world outside of this festival setting, I think it would probably be extremely difficult to manage and do, and it's still it's extremely difficult here. I mean, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of personalities and opinions. I face a lot of the same challenges that I would in any other job, but I think the difference is that our vision and our intention for the project is really synced. Over the years, like all of the friends, the people that have been drawn to us and, and surrounded us and supported us, uh, have all fallen naturally into roles that we've needed to fill. So, you know, as the festival gets larger and we need somebody to handle the sustainability or the waste, you know, friends kind of just step up to the plate uh, that are really already drawn to that role. When we're all tired, we don't have our full brain capacity, and yet we can work together still with that attitude of yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Give what you have and circulate it so that the more than enough a universe can begin to express itself and you begin to see possibilities. You live from that domain. Let it be.
premise of Lucidity Festival is kind of a mixture of other festivals. We have large sound camps, but at the same time, we also have these excellent villages that are bringing forth their own installations. So it's very much an open source gathering. Each village has a village elder, and each village elder brings together a council, like a core council. And we empower them with a budget to bring in collaborator groups and different types of content to realize their vision for each of these spaces. This is our Wise Owl Healing Sanctuary Village Elder. We had this group of 50 healers who've been in communication for the last three months, working out the logistics. We had an online forum where we all got to share our intentions and what we wanted to bring to the space. And I felt like a big part of my role was to hold that collective voice and to support what they wanted this place to feel like. We're creating a transformational music and arts festival. That's a three pillar festival. And so we're really working to, in our budget, allocate equal balance towards the transformational aspects, the music aspect, and the arts aspect. Solstice Parade for Lucidity Festival coming out of every village. We have the Pixies, we have the Stillwalkers, we have the Dragons, we have the musicians. Everybody's here coming together because it's a party! You're so tall. So tall. It takes a village to raise a child. It takes a village to create the festival. What we're doing by creating a temporary village is we're instilling communication skills within our, our core, and that core can extend out to hundreds of people. 5,000 is our population, and our guest list is around 2,000. Mm. So that's like 40% mm -hmm. participant. When you embrace the co-creative process, it's actually good for the bottom line. It's good for the business, it's good for the culture, it's good for everybody's businesses that are in association and alignment, and it just generates more abundance for everyone. Our next segment of The Bloom explores the principle of participation, where the usual role of being consumers, purchasing a ticket to be entertained, is being transformed into a reality where each of us bring our gifts to contribute to the experience. Because you are natural leaders, and you are powerful, and you are beautiful, and you are gifted, and you are loved. You understand that? You are? Future. You are Future. and you are walking on sacred ground. So once you say, I'm gonna say Mama Earth, you're gonna say sacred. Mama Earth! Sacred! Mama Earth! Sacred! Mama Earth is sacred! Yeah. And remember that every time you step. Yeah, I'm John Nash and um, I'm the founder of the Kids Natural Leaders Foundation. Uh, throw it in, throw it in. <laughs> throw it in, throw it in. It's just like a tribe and we have fun, stamp each other and like talk about stuff, dance around and like we have like a leader and we say are you present and then everybody says yes and then he says are we present? Yeah! Who are we? Who are we? Natural, Natural leaders. leaders! Okay. <laughs> it just, it teaches you how to be a better kid. It's fun. I'm here to remind them, trust in yourself, we're giving you the tools to do this. That's what we're doing. We really just give them the tools. I love myself. I love myself. I trust myself. I trust myself. I was really scared to go back to my hometown and like do what I'm doing here and like talk about love and joy and like earth and spirit. That was scary to do in Compton. I'm from the hood. You don't tell yourself you love yourself and trust yourself. I honor myself. I honor myself. I respect myself. I respect myself. I connect with Mother Earth. I connect with Mother Earth. You, you understand how closely connected you are to the Mother, to Earth? Who are we? Natural leader. I grew up in a supposedly bad, poor life, but I look at that life as experience, and 
My struggles and pains are gifts. Now I can be present with that and give that nurture to the children because we all have gifts. We just have to remember them. Love you, kids. You guys were amazing. I love you. One festival participant is the artisan or vendor, most of whom provide uniquely crafted clothing, products, or food within a thriving social economy contained within the festival. My business is all about pine cones. We take a cross section right from the very center of the cone and sand it down, polish it up really fine, and turn it into jewelry. All of these different little businesses, all of these little booths, all have people who are able to make a living and support themselves within this transformational festival culture. And for them, it is their livelihood. Um, they're employing not just themselves, but also the people who are working in their communities. It's the essence of the sacred commerce is getting to have a personal relationship with the people who have crafted the thing that you're purchasing. I really enjoy participating in them in some way instead of just being here to watch and play. I really like to serve. Forever I've been like volunteering on kitchen crews at festivals and stuff like that and feeding people. Being in service through food at the festivals. All of these artisans who are creating and offering their creations to the world, 5,000 people here who appreciate that so much and buy from them and in doing so support their livelihoods and allow them to continue sustaining themselves in today's economic situation. It's pretty cool that we're like creating this like micro economy. Turning my hobby into my career has made work a lot of fun and, and the line between work and play is really blurred so I find that work is what I most want to do. It's so rewarding on so many levels besides just financial that I continually remind myself what is the true value in, in what I'm doing. Whenever we're at a festival, we do a lot more than vent too. We try to bring a whole zone there. Um, we are really open to teaching people how to use the tools. It's inherent to want to do this with other people. It's not competitive. It's this constant exploration. People who've never been to festivals before end up going because they got into the flow arts. People who go to festivals and have never seen the flow arts before discover them at festivals. Just last year I built this mobile cart, um, which makes it a little more fun. Could check out different music, see more of the festival. I'm able to fully uh, sustain my lifestyle just selling Palo Santo. And people love it, and it's such a wonderful heart-opening, mind-clearing medicine for everyone. I'm bringing the Shipibo patterns uh, to our tribe culture. Has there been some kind of ethic that you brought um, into the relationships that um, is, is shifting that paradigm or rewriting that paradigm? Well, for me, um, when I got there, I pretty much consulted with them, and as a group, we agreed on like cost and prices and things that were feasible for both of us, you know. We have about 120 women. It's a village of like a thousand people that um, come voluntarily to work with us. By us bringing this is really helping them to fill that like artistic need and also help them financially without changing their lifestyle. And let's not forget that a significant number of people at the festival are volunteers. I feel like I, my purpose is to participate as a volunteer. You get so much more out of it, I think, if you're really behind the scenes and working with people. When you come to a transformational festival or you're building for a large scale event like this, it's an inn. The role of a volunteer is almost a rite of passage. You come in and you bring your energy, you bring your efforts, your drive, your passions. I've worked on pretty much every crew that the festivals have, uh, except for first aid and security. <laughs> so what we really try and do is capitalize on what people's interests are, and in turn offer them an experience to be able to embrace their gifts. I didn't know anyone, and from there was the start of my like endless building, growing community of you know hundreds and hundreds of people from around the world, <laughs> and all kinds of like you know scientists and musicians and artists. 
cooks and gardeners and all kinds of people. And that's all just from going to one festival by myself and just not being able to pay for a ticket. <laughs> I volunteered for my very first go around at a festival. And in turn, that's what set me on my path for bringing forth art to festivals in a major way. This is the first time I'm not actually volunteering and it feels weird. I don't know what to do actually. Without the volunteers, it's not possible. You get this evolution that starts to happen within people. They, they go from being participants of the festival where they're just like showing up, throwing up their tent, and um, you know, uh, staying for the weekend. And then they, everyone seems to evolve into this space where they, then they see, hey, it's okay for me to bring my gifts to this, this type of environment because I'm gonna be accepted for that gift, no matter what it is. My secret agent name is Silvatron, and we're with the Moop Squad, leaving things more beautiful than we found it. Moop is matter out of place. Sometimes it's an accident, things fall out of your pocket. Sometimes it's a can someone forgot. Sometimes it's a Moop emergency. It could be a camera that fell off of a tripod. It could be something of value. It could be something of no value. But whatever it is, if it's Moop, please take care of it. Put it back where it belongs. Moop emergency, disaster averted. I've been doing this for 10 years. Started off at Burning Man and, you know, close friend and me, we just go out with our wands and we go on these treasure hunts. It's like, what an amazing thing, this leave no trace for 60,000 people to really leave less trash than ca camping family. And, you know, we just came back from an eight country tour to bring it to the next level where Bringing this idea to Eastern Europe, to Europe, to Central America, and we're going to have moop groups all over the world. You're going to see girls dressed in colors wielding these moop wands everywhere you go. And it would be a shame for anyone to drop something. Yeah, if there's any sadness around it, it's that, it's that it took so long to get to this place. I look at friends who are, are very closed off, people that I work with in business who are very closed off, who, who you, you know that they've got really, really amazing gifts, that they could just be so expansive with their gifts. And, and if, a, if an employer just saw some of that and said, you know, go with that, you could see them start to expand and, and grow. Maybe not in this, maybe this is just too much for them, but you could still see that. In the last three years, I went from being in an executive office in one of the largest companies in the United States, sitting in an office 12 hours a day, to this. And I'm a firewalk instructor now, and I do live art, visionary art, and um, just have fun. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy life, you know, and I'm just so grateful for discovering me through the festivals. I came down from Anchorage, Alaska. What kind of brought me here was my brother. I've been going to some of the workshops, um, especially a lot over in like the Lover's Nest, where it's been a lot of heart activation and a lot of just kind of communication type workshops. My husband, who over the last year we've been having trouble and coming here it's allowed us to just completely reconnect and heal and start like building our relationship back up to where we both want it and it's been so magical and so healing for us it's just it's really wonderful and i'm so grateful for it i'm so excited to be here and have this kind of start being my path in life it's just everything to me Opens my heart, opens all our hearts, like, you know, we're all gifted, like it is, we're all so gifted, we really are, we all are perfect, and we all, you know, so perfect in our imperfections, and we're all miracles, I say it every day to myself, you know, we're miracles, we really are, and when the kids remind me of that, and I think they remind us all of that. I go back and forth every single day The clarity it comes to me in the choppy ways The feelings and the places and the seasons change The galaxies remain 
energy fields pulling the body to space The angels that are coupled in the spiritual ways The hate that gets me disrespect from my spiritual pace Tenfold the mana when the planets are in place In polar alignment We're on assignment Bodies on consignment Return them to the circus And what is the purpose? What is the purpose? And would you believe it? Would you believe it if you knew what you were for and how you became so informed? Bodies of info performing such miracles. I am a miracle made up of particles, and in this existence, I'll stay persistent and I'll make a difference, and I will have lived it. Our final segment looks at the theme of modeling, the many diverse ways that participants are bringing the values and revelations they gain through transformational festivals back into their communities and everyday lives. Yeah, we can all get together here and be thankful and grateful for this incredible way that we get to celebrate in this ancient tradition of gathering as a tribe. But I mean, there's others that don't get to see even a speck of this. And to really embody that and try to, you know, like balance it within ourselves and project and reflect that to our collective is supremely relevant. Like we can take this energy that we cultivate here and, you know, shine it. The Karuna Collectiva and everything that we do is helping to kind of support and nurture and expand consciousness in every single form and really connect back to uh, Mother Earth and the cycles of life that she provides us. So for us, we really take it upon ourselves to be this, these ambassadors to other people because, you know, these festivals are about diversity and they are about growth and they are about evolution and we're just kind of supporting that by being here, being present. We want to take what we can and learn from this experience and go back to New Mexico and explode that vision all over back home. People come to these festivals as like kind of seeking something, you know, or if they do know something, they want to share it with others, you know. And I think the one thing that we've learned from our collective experience is that it's about giving back, you know, and that reciprocity, you know, not only to the earth, but to all people and to all beings, you know, through gardening, through bicycling, through art, you know, and connecting it to service, to youth, you know, because I don't think people really think of like community service, right? And like, you know, festivals kind of going hand in hand, but I see that as the future of festivals. We're called First Saturdays, and every first Saturday of the month, uh, about 50 to 60 volunteers get together and collect donated clothes and make care packs with food and all sorts of toiletries. And then we bring all that stuff downtown and, and give it out to two, 300 of the people who are more needy in San Diego. And what we try to do, because we have so many volunteers, is we try to make it into kind of a, a service experience. And we try to be the, the street boutique and, and have personal shoppers say, oh, what size are you looking for? And, and really try to make a dignified experience for people that, um, that might not have it that often. I have learned so much from the gifting principle and the idea of how when you give to someone else, it actually can make yourself happier, lighter, and more joy, and that has been life-changing. No one is helped by you suffering for them. The way that the world is helped is by you finding out how you can spread light as brightly as possible. And then when you find an opportunity, someone who could be lifted up, someone who needs something that you have, you do so without depleting yourself. You actually give to them and you are energized too. So both of you are lifted up, and that is a model that actually is sustainable. Then you realize that this, this target zone for happiness and joy in the world is not just you and your bank account and your house. It's billions of times like that because there's every person you meet, if you can make them a little bit happier, you will make yourself a little bit happier. And so I don't think there's any possible way that I can give enough blankets or enough food, but I think that every time you teach someone, showing them that it actually can make them happy to be a giver, you create this 
It's very similar to like a theme camp family where you start to come together with a shared gift that you want to give and shared values and you reflect to one another this this kind of the kind of people that you want to be and the kind of experience that you want to have in the world and so this community gets formed and you are able to give to the world in a in a grander more impactful way than you could ever do by yourself I co-produced the, the yoga, meditation, and dance flash mob. Well, we had about 58 um, cities all around the world um, and celebrating at Earth Days, uh, having synchronized uh, meditation flash mobs, yoga flash mobs, and dance, dance flash mobs. I'm very interested to bring sacred activism into the streets, to bring the power of prayer and the power of community coming with an intention for healing into the streets as a means to heal ourselves, find the resilience and the, the spirit that unites us, and invite a new story to, to come forth. A story that we don't just shout to people, but that we express in an embodied way, and that people can just feel it when they enter the field. What we're looking for is the common thread between the yogis and the meditators and the people who go to transformational festivals and the environmentalists and the people that work at nonprofits. And now it's beginning to spill into the normal world, you know, like um, the middle of San Francisco. Welcome to the Center SF. Uh, we are a conscious living collective in an event space in the lower height of San Francisco. And uh, we're very happy to have you all here. Why don't you come inside and check it out with us? Welcome. <laughs> this is uh, the Healing Sanctuary where we rent out various office spaces for people to come in and um, do their practices here. Um, so this is just our living room communal space where we'll have all of our uh, bi-weekly house meetings. There's 23 of us that live here, so it's very important that we come together regularly to um, share with what we're doing and organize and keep a, our cohesive vision together. It's a, a lot of love and communication and meeting and coming together and connection happens in this space and it's really beautiful how this space has evolved to be the heart of our home and we meet new incredible human beings here all the time so it's an honor to host all these wonderful people and feed them. The four of us came together because we wanted to create an education, healing, consciousness training center slash living collective. And this space has such a beautiful, wide open space that offered so much to the imagination. Um, on top of having 19 bedrooms upstairs for us to call in various healers, mystics, artists to come together and co-create a vision that we put together for uh, creating a space of connection and growth and creativity and transformation on, on all levels. through bringing this into, into the heart of San Francisco, we are actualizing that, you know, the gifts that we receive from festival culture into our day-to-day -day existence and our passions are becoming our sustenance and it's a collaborative, co-creative process that we're all engaged in continually. There's this grand experiment of how to make festival culture part of everyday life and I think it's succeeding really well. Now we, uh, when we go to these festivals, it's not, we, it's not the same like split between our home lives. What's that like to be living with 25 people all together? What's that like to be living in community? I mean, amazing. It's amazing. It is, it is amazing. amazing. I mean, it is amazing. Like, but like, you know, like any family kind of environment, you're, there's always going to be challenges, but I honestly cannot imagine my life being any other way right now than, than living with people who are not my blood, but they're my family in the realest respects. As long as communication is present, you know, we can move through anything. And the bond that holds us together is way stronger than mm -hmm. any drama that can arise. Yeah. Yeah. I can't imagine being as, as far, far along in my own creative passions and endeavors if I wasn't surrounded by others who are pursuing their own or, or aiding me in mine. It's, uh, there's just a lot of amazing magic that happens when you come together with like-minded individuals and share a cohesive vision. <laughs> Every day is a festival. Every day is a festival. <laughs> <laughs> The 
This is Evo, the Emerald Village. We got together over the past few years, the, the ten of us, uh, around the idea that we wanted to, rather than after every event, sort of have all the energy disperse out and at the best leave no trace, we wanted to leave an awesome trace. Well, we had another beautiful day today. About 40 of our local Southern California community showed up and we got a ton of work done. I'm a carpenter and I'm here because uh, a bunch of my friends own this property and they asked me to come out and give a hand and in the spirit of community, I'm out here lending my skills to them uh, without the expectation of anything in return just because what we're creating here is something that's revolutionary that I think is going to change a lot of minds about what a community means and how the economy of a community has to run. We're remembering how we can celebrate together through work and productivity and, and barn raising. We have the ability to plant the seeds for the next seven generations out to be able to have their lives be sustainable and uh, creating the life we were meant to be living. What if all that beauty, all that effort, all that manpower and woman power went into the land and each year and each gathering got to just build on that. Sustainable living was always in my heart, but things happened and things changed, and now is my year to get back into that and to make a contribution. All this effort and all this work, we can leave for these guys, you know, and they can grow up in it, and it, it becomes an environment that we live in and not vacation to. We are really excited that, that we have this, this beautiful canvas to paint our dreams on. I guess the message that I would pass on is uh, thank you to all of you who have created this festival culture and really opened your hearts and brought forth your creativity to show the planet what's possible, to show the planet what's necessary. And it really goes with my core messages, which is we already have what it takes to thrive. Now it's a matter of freeing it up, letting it out, letting people uh, create uh, spontaneously and voluntarily. And as we allow that to happen, which I know is emerging and is unstoppable right now, we will be living on a planet that is healthy beyond our wildest dreams where absolutely every single person has the opportunity to thrive. Thanks for joining us for episode two of The Bloom, Practicing the New World. We live in a time where it feels like our species and our planet are at the edge of a precipice. All around us, we are inundated by bad, if not terrible, news. It can be easy to despair. What we wanted to share with this episode were stories of how participants are doing it right in a diverse array of manners, each of them inspiring. The values of co-creation, participation, and modeling are showing the way and teaching us the skills to remake our world in artful, sustainable, just, and loving ways. Ways which have positive impacts on our shared reality. We invite you to continue on the journey with us for episode three of The Bloom as we investigate the themes of mythos, ritual, and the sacred as they are appearing in the evolving culture of transformational festivals. Until then, as always, namaste and many blessings on your journeys.
Each day that I wake, I will praise, I will praise. Each day that I wake, I give thanks, I give thanks. Each day that I wake, I will praise, I will praise. Each day that I wake. I give thanks, I give thanks. And the day that I don't wake up and transcend holy makeup, I am capable, I am powerful. The day that I don't wake up and transcend holy makeup, I am on my way. To a different place. Da, 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 da. I'm not a leader, just a creature seeking the features of a teacher. Why do you follow where you lead? I'm the mysterious ways of nature and I'm into it. Changing management. And there are various ways to conquer this monotonous metropolis. My stubbornness is bottomless, my fearlessness is talking shit and I'm wide awake. And I'm taking names. I'm not a leader, just a creature seeking the features of a teacher. Where do you follow where you lead? I'm the mysterious ways of nature and I'm into it. My stubborn is the bottom in my feelings Just talking shit and I'm wide awake And I'm taking names Do you speak to me like you speak to God? All of the love and understanding between the Father and the Son Do you believe in the perfectness of where you are? These are my people, these are my children This is the land that I would fight for My solidarity is telling me to patiently Be moving the musical medicine around the planet in a hurry Cause there's no time to wait Gotta wake up the people, time to stand up and say we know what we are for And how we became so informed Bodies of info performing such miracles I am a miracle made up of particles And in this existence I'll stay persistent And I'll make a Give them.